Good evening, people of the vinyl community. Well, it will be evening when this goes live. And welcome to my discography review of Iron Maiden. So, why don't we just get started? But first, a little bit of a caveat for you. I will not be covering live albums here. I don't consider live albums part of the overall disc discography. Sure, that they're, they're released by the band, obviously, but they're not in the studio albums. So I will not be covering them. So why don't we just get right on with it and talk about the Paul Diano years of Iron Maiden. Um, another little caveat for you. I will not really be able to go in depth. Banana smoothie. Um, I will not be able to go in depth. Of the music here because I'm not a music critic. What I'm gonna do is I'll, I will tell you my favorite song on the album and then we'll move on. Um, so yeah. Maybe a score of 10 as well. Yeah we'll do that, we'll do a score of 10. So, Iron Maiden. Um, a favorite song off of this being one of the best debut albums in heavy metal history is Running Free. And I really love that song. I also own it on CD. On the uh, remaster collection. So yeah, that is the debut. A classic. Next we have Killers on this very lovely looking 2014 reissue. I mean, look at how clean that is. Well, I keep my vinyl on good neck, so that's why it's like that. Um, I find that this album is better. Oh, by the way, score out of 10 for Iron Maiden is a 7. No, an 8 out of 10. This is a 9. I find it better just because of the slightly stronger track list for me. My favourite song of, the, of here being Wrathchild. Right, I could save this for a controversial opinion video, but nah, I'm just going to say it now. I don't think this album is Iron Maiden's best, and I don't think it's a perfect record either. Um, I am not denying how important it is, I'm just denying how hyped it is. Because I find that on Number of the Beast... Uh, there are two weak tracks which save it from being a complete masterpiece for me, and that is Invaders and Gangland. I really do not like both of those tracks. If it was not for those tracks, this album would be perfect, because the rest of the track listing is just incredible, like Children of the Damned, The Prisoner, 22 Acacia Avenue, Number of the Beast, Run to the Hills, and How Would Be Thy Name. Like, that is an incredible track list. Score of uh, 10 would be an 8 as well, so, um, but I do prefer the Paul, the Paul Dion debut to this, as a whole. Song-wise, it goes to Number of the Beast. Um, and yes, I do own all of their albums on CD as well, so there are Killers and Number of the Beast for you as well. I'll just move uh, my CDs down here. There'll be a lot of moving about in this video, and this what this might turn out to be my longest video, maybe my shortest because we are flying through these quite quickly. Next is Peace of Mind, which is from Gatefold. This again is part of that uh, remaster collection from 2014. And I do prefer this album to Number of the Beast. However, um, I feel like the uh, closing track to Tame Land is not very good. I just don't care about the source material. So the, the lyrics just go over my head. So, yeah, I'm not a fan of that song because of that. Musically, it's great, but 
I'm just not a fan of the lyrical content, but um, favourite track of here uh, would be um, I'm just going to be basic and say The Trooper. My uh, favourite song of A Number of the Beast is Hallow Be The Name and my favourite off of... No, I said my favourite off of The Killers. You can tell that I never script these things, can you? <sighs> it's better that way. It feels more um, authentic that way. Here's my favourite Maiden album, Power Slave. Ah, score for Peace of Mind is a an 8 again but this is a 10 undisputed and there's a couple more tens in this band's discography but if you are as biased to these guys as me then you would know that <coughs> um favorite track off of this is two minutes to midnight or power slave both are amazing and this album would get a complete 10 out of 10 as I've said. Right next, we'll have to go to the CDs for the next album because I don't own it on vinyl as of yet. It's not like I can't buy it because I can, but it is somewhere in time. Here's another 10 out of 10 album for you. <laughs> um, yeah. Heavily inspired by the movie Blade Runner, which is my favourite movie of all time. And I have it on soundtrack on vinyl. So yeah. Favourite track off of here. Oh, that would be a Deja Vu. Yeah, 10 out of 10. I used to have a very controversial opinion about this album. I used to think it was actually rubbish. But that was just because of the overuse of synth synthesizers. I thought it was a bit too cheesy for me, but no. I gave this album a proper listen, um, and it is a masterpiece. And of course, since I own, it on C own all of them on CD, there's a CD too. So yeah. Maiden's last good album for quite a little while after this. <laughs> um, spoilers for my opinion on the next one. It's not like I hate it, because... To be honest, I really don't hate No Prayer for the Dying. I just find it very forgettable and um, a bit of a chore to get through. Um, even though... Um, my favourite track off of it is Holy Smoke. Even though Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter is also really good. There are great songs on this. It's just that to get to them, you have to get through some boring ones. So, yeah. This gets a 7 out of 10. Still great album, though. No, not as many as 6, yeah. We're going for a 6 up for this. Um, yeah. Fav our favourite song off of Seven Sun? Oh. Can I play with madness? Fear of the Dark. Um, first of all, my favourite song of it is Judas Be My Guide, but this is an even more, even more of a drag than No Prayer for the Dying. It'd take a fucking eternity to get through this. Yeah, this is also a six for me. I'm sure it has its fans, but I am not one of them. Now, I'm going to bring up both of these albums at the same time, because they are... Um, they're pretty much one and the same, really. But with this one being stronger for me. This is The X Factor, starring Blaze Bailey. Instead of Bruce Dickinson. Starring? Featuring. It's not a fucking movie, Connor. Even though that would be a fucking Hellraiser movie, wouldn't it? Anywho, um, I do have a lot of 
favourite songs off of this, actually. Um, Judgment of Heaven, Blood in the World's Hands, Sign of the Cross, Lord of the Flies. But as an Iron Maiden album, it gets a six as well because of Blaze's vocals. They just don't fit the band, in my opinion. Uh, but this one here is worse, Virtual Eleven. I like um, three songs, Feature Real, Lightning Strikes Twice, and The Klansman. The rest of it is almost complete garbage. Um, Angel and the Gambler being the worst Iron Maiden song. Hate that song. <laughs> like, really. So yeah, these two both get a six as well. That is a shame. I really wanted to like these. Uh, I, I do like them. That's the thing with Iron Maiden. I don't think they have bad albums. Well, if you took these albums on their own and removed the Iron Maiden name, I think you'd have a better time with them. But since they have the name of Iron Maiden on them, it's the clout of them being associated with the rest of Maiden, which is why they get a six. But they're not bad albums. However, Bruce Dickinson came back in 2000 with this, and this is a bloody masterpiece. Brave New World. Love it to bits, honestly. This album is a track for track masterpiece. I love it. Um, Favourite song is The Mercenary. Even though the chorus leaves a bit to be desired, but still, this album is a 10 out of 10. Told you there'd be more. <clears throat> right, next is the very unappreciated Dance of Death, but it's mostly, un mostly unappreciated because of that fucking Beast Transformers Beast Wars esque cover art. Like, if, if you've seen that show, then um, you will know how bad the CGI is. Yeah, that is an awful cover. If they just removed all these party gores and just had death, or well, death Eddie standing there, that that would make for a better cover. Um, there's actually a couple of fan-made covers for this online, which are really cool. So yeah, I think this album is a 9 out of 10, almost as good as Brave New World. Um, Passchendaele, Dance of Death, Rainmaker, just incredible album right here, and underappreciated. Now we have A Matter of Life and Death, which is not as strong as Dance of Death. I'd give it an 8. Um, I love Different World because the chorus of that sounds like a Green Day song. Like, squint really hard when you listen to the chorus of Different World. And you hear Green Day. Well, I hear Green Day, anyway. Uh, these Colours Don't Run is great. Brighter Than a Thousand Suns is amazing. For the Greater Good of God is the best song off this thing, though. I love songs which tackle the uh, topic of religion, since I am not a fan. But I do not want to bring that up here. Don't want to focus on it. So that's an eight. They were going so strong. And they decided to release this. The songs on this are all good. All good. The problem is that they're all too goddamn long. The Final Frontier gets a six for me. Yeah. A six. It's too long. 
the songs drag far too long for their own good. However, they're still good. It just gives a six for length. It's just boring to sit through. Like, these songs could have finished ages before they do. Yes, I know I have a low battery, don't remind me. So yeah, this gets a 6 out of 10. And then we have The Book of Souls. Their most recent album from 2015. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this either, but the first half of this album is amazing. The second half is what lets it down. So this is, is better than The Final Frontier, so it gets a 7 out of 10. And I hope that when Maiden come up with a new album, maybe this year, maybe next year, that they top this. That they give us another Brave New World. Because expecting another Power Slave from these guys at this age is... It's just not feasible. Well, saying that, Judas Priest came out with a... And, Pretty much a pseudo sequel of Painkiller with firepower. It was honestly that good, in my opinion. Right, let me just uh, put this video over 20 minutes for you. Um, because it's just weird me not doing that. I will show you all the rest of my Iron Maiden stuff. And I will also rank the albums for you. Um... So I have um, this DVD, which is um, the early days documentary, the uh, history of Iron Maiden, sorry, with part two being on the DVD for Alive After Death. Also have Flight 666, then Rock and Rio. Then we have on Vivo. Then we have the live albums I have on vinyl and CD. Um, starting off with, of course, Life After Death, which I have not seen yet. Yeah, I really need to fix that, don't I? Because I own the DVD, I might as well watch that today. I may even review it for you. Um, then I have um, a real live dead one and live at Donington. I believe my mate Rob saw this show, which I'm very jealous about. By the way, Bat Eddie is one of the most underrated Eddies that there is. Oh, my favourite Eddie, I might as well say. Uh, favourite Eddie for me is... Um, Stranger in a Strange Land. You know, when Eddie is um, in the bar and he has the fedora and the trench coat. He just looks like an absolute badass. So yeah, that's those two. And a birthday present which I got from my mate Rob. Um, from now on I'm just going to call him Rob. Uh, you guys are... Uh, used to my videos enough, so I can just call him by that instead of saying my mate before that. So yeah, um, I got this from him. I wanted the DVD, but they didn't have it in Groucho's, so... Yeah, I have not watched this yet. Well, listened to it yet. This is just the CD. Yeah, just the CD. I would love to get the DVD though. And of course, the vinyl of Live After Death. That's right, I have three copies of this bad boy. Um, which just makes it completely mad that I've not actually listened to this show or seen it on the DVD yet. But that is that. Rob also saw them on this show. 
Um, if only I had a time machine. Like, I was definitely born in the wrong decade. <laughs> um, get in the goddamn sleeve, will you? Thank you. <laughs> oh, what are we at? Hey, 20 minutes. My usual. So yeah, it's life after death for you. Um, and lastly, I will show you my maiden singles. I do have a few down here. Um, Oh, ah. right, let's just get through these and get to the good ship. There we go. The relevant ship, because this is all my, all of my singles here. Anyway, we have a sanctuary and running free. Run to the Hills, Flight of Icarus, The Evil That Men Do, and Infinite Dreams. Right, lastly, let me just quickly rank these bad boys. This will be my longest video yet. If, if you stick around here, then thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, this will not take long at all. Because I know for a fact that these two will be at the bottom. I should have done this whilst I was putting them down, eh? That, that, that would have been handy, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um... Uh, actually, no, I'll do that in a different video. I don't want this to, tr to trail on for too long. Because uh, you'd uh, more than likely turn the video off. Alright, so that is my opinion on Iron Maiden. Um, hopefully there's not anything too controversial here that'll cause you to click off the video, because that'd be a shame. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. And I'm going to enjoy my banana smoothie. Whilst I do a quick follow-up to this video and uh, give you my ranking of Iron Maiden. So, um, rock on bitches and I'll see you then.